Hello people and welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time on the channel, a special welcome to you. I ask that you check out the rest of my videos. If you like what you see, give them a thumbs up, leave a comment, but more than anything, I'm asking that you subscribe to the channel. Today I'm going to be talking about a Jamaican by the name of Akeem Hunter who was 16 years old in 2015. There was an issue with Akeem and his travel plans in 2015 as he intended to visit his aunt who lived in the Netherlands. And you know on my channel I'm always encouraging Jamaican and Caribbean people to travel and see the world. So when someone actually gets stopped in their attempt to travel and see the world for one reason or another, it does become a concern to me, especially if there's a suspicion of violation of human rights or violation of the person on a whole. In this particular case, I'm going to quickly run it down to you. And even though I usually don't speculate on my channel, this particular case leaves room for me to speculate. After all, I'm human. <laughs> I can actually speculate once or twice. But on this channel, when I speak, I want to always substantiate with facts. Anyway, so the story goes like this. Akeem Hunter, who was 16 years old, had the permission from his father in Jamaica that he can go and visit his aunt who lived in the Netherlands. And like most Jamaicans do, when they're booking international flight and trip, if they don't understand the ins and outs of flight connection, the easiest thing to do is to consult with a a travel agent and in this case Akeem actually consulted with a travel agent who came up with what he or she believed to be was the most convenient route from Jamaica to the Netherlands. So the route involved flying out of Kingston, going to Trinidad and Tobago, flying out of Trinidad and Tobago to Suriname and from Suriname he had to go through Turkey and from Turkey he was going to land in the Netherlands. However his trip actually started in Kingston and didn't get any further than Suriname. So according to the details that was forwarded to me, Akeem got to Kingston Norman Madley International Airport and for no specified reason, he was actually detained by the police officers at the airport, asked some personal question in particularly about his religion and his father. And that's where my speculation comes in. However, he was allowed to fly out of Kingston to Trinidad and Tobago. When he got to Trinidad and Tobago, he actually suffered the same consequences of interrogation of personal questions. Again, after that questionnaire and his answers, he was allowed to fly out of Trinidad and Tobago onto Suriname. But when he gets to Suriname and the same thing repeated as a smart 16 year old, Akeem asks why the question and why the interrogation. And he learned that the questions in Trinidad and the questions in Suriname was because he was initially questioned in his home country of Jamaica. So if I'm reading through the details correctly, even though Jamaica questioned and released this young man, they forward the information to Trinidad and to Suriname for one reason or another to question him again. So according to the details, it would have led me to believe that as long as his paperwork and his ticket was in order, Trinidad and Suriname would have no reason to question him but Jamaica who seemed to have doubted his travel plans to begin with for one reason or another gave Trinidad and gave Suriname reasons to interrogate him. Again I wasn't there this is what I read this is the information that's brought through to me. Apparently Suriname who now has information that this passenger has been questioned by two travel authority prior to them didn't want to take any chance flying him out of Suriname onto Turkey so they for one reason or another, returned him back to Jamaica. Crazy, right? I mean, from the understanding that I have, all his paperwork was in order. He had a ticket that would take him from Jamaica to Trinidad and from Trinidad to Suriname and from Suriname to Turkey. He also had his transit visa, which he acquired in line because for most Jamaican that may not know, he didn't need an EU visa because Turkey is not a part of the EU and Jamaicans are allowed to travel to Turkey as long as they acquire an E visa, which I believe 
cost somewhere between 70 to 200 dollars i can't quite remember anyway when the scan was returned to jamaica the jamaican police officers at kingston norman manley international airport arrested this child the first time he was only detained for question but up in his return he was arrested and this kid was arrested simply because he was going through Turkey and Turkey has been on suspicious list in the past for having some relations with ISIS and other terrorist group. So Akeem Unser came back to Jamaica and arrested people. This kid was arrested and charged for suspicion in financing terrorist activity and facilitating terrorist activity and terrorism. That must just been so frightening for his 16 year old brain. This kid was told that he was being arrested and charged for terroristic activity in connection with the terroristic group known as ISIS. Here's how I feel about the situation and this is where my speculation comes in. Like I say on my channel, I don't like speculations from people and I don't like speculating myself. But considering that the information that I received did not substantiate itself with any online activities of this kid, his name was not flagged by the Jamaica Cybersecurity Unit or anything like that. They didn't have any prior information about this kid to say, well, let's flag this child because what he's been doing online or what he's been doing in his activity that has came across Across our radar we have substantial information that this kid has been communicating or has some connection with a terroristic group in Turkey since none of that came up it only left me to believe that there's only one reason why they would pull this kid out of a line and ask him about his religion and his father and his family history it is very clear, to me at least, that he was pulled out of the line simply because of his name, Akim. It's not an everyday Jamaican name. It's not an everyday Caribbean name. But it is a popular name with Muslims and it's a popular name among Islamic people. Akim, Mohammed, all those names are popular. So that's the only thing I can think of people. I need you to tell me if I'm thinking wrong or if I'm just being ridiculous because it's the only thing that stood out to me. I mean, his last name is Anta, so that's all Caribbean, that's all black. But Akim, that goes in alignment with Islam, Muslim. I mean, it's a popular name in the Middle East. And this kid was about, this Akeem was about to fly from Jamaica to Turkey. So I can see where some suspicion is there. However, if that's a fact, the Jamaican government had no right to detain him under that for that reason. Of course, they're not gonna admit it that it's for that reason. Because under Jamaican constitution, under human rights, under democratic rules, there is a clause that says people should not be treated with prejudice based upon their name, based upon their gender, based upon their sex, and so on and so forth. So if that actually proves itself that the only reason why this child was pulled over as a suspect in connection with terrorism was his name, now the Jamaican government would be in a whole lot of problem civil wise, you know, I'm talking about lawsuit wise. It gets worse because after he got arrested in Jamaica, he was taken to the juvenile center in Kingston. And while this kid was in the juvenile center, he was attacked by hardened juveniles who've been in and out of the juvenile center. And in one of the attack, poor kid lost one of his tooth he went in and he came out disfigured. So I'm all for his defense, especially if the Jamaican police, if the Jamaican government, if the Jamaican prosecution side of things cannot establish facts that they have grounds, that they have some sort, even circumstantial. Don't even get into substantial. I will even take from the Jamaican police authorities that they have circumstantial grounds for detaining him and arresting him and sending him to the juvenile detention center. I, that's how much slacks I'm willing to cut them. If they can even say we had circumstantial reason outside of his name being Akeem, that this kid might have some connection with a terroristic group, then I could say, hey, you know, Jamaica, well done, well done. You know, you're securing your borders and you're securing the citizens and you're doing a good job. 
But if the Jamaican police and the Jamaican cyber unit and the Jamaican prosecutors cannot substantiate a reason for this child to have been arrested and locked up, then Jamaican government need to compensate Akeem Hunter and his family for the violation of his human rights and the violation of his constitutional rights of Jamaica. Fortunately, the family was not slow and the family was smart enough to acquire an attorney by the name of Zara Lewis who has pretty much done what I would have suggested on this channel. She actually filed an apius corpus which actually got Akeem to be released. So I applaud Zara Lewis to be up in her legal works. I, I like it. I like to see when people who are involved in law, especially in the defense side of law, when they do what the framework of law allows them to do and watch justice prevail. So once again, I applaud Zara Lewis for doing her thing for Akeem and getting him out there. And now Akeem and his family is thinking about suing for six million Jamaican dollars. I mean, in my eyes, um, money cannot equate the health or welfare of a human being as to why they come to the figure six million. I don't know, but I would encourage people who believe that their human rights have been violated violated to hit the violator where it hurts as hard as possible. So what I mean by that is to go as high with your lawsuit as possible, 10 million, 50 million, whatever, and let the court or the judge that's presiding over the matter negotiates a lower settlement, but hit them where it's hurt. Because from my understanding, after Akeem has been released from juvenile center, he's not been himself. This kid has been stressed out. I would only imagine that emotionally he would be damaged. And not only that, I could only imagine that he would be fearful of taking another flight to anywhere you know and that saddens me if that's his reality because like I say on my channel I always encourage people to travel and see the world but apparently I mean something is in the mix that's trying to put bondage on my people's feet now teenagers are being suspected of terroristic activity. I'm not saying it doesn't happen. I don't know Akeem personally and I'm not vowing for his innocence but I'm just using the facts that was put in front of me and like I say if the JDCF does not have substantial or even a reasonable circumstantial reason for detaining and arresting this kid then they should pay. They should pay some consequences. The Jamaican government should come down hard in the JCF and let them know that listen do you work properly? Do you research properly? Because every Jamaican deserves the enjoyment of freedom and the extension of liberty. Whether that that's in Jamaica or in any other country. Anyway, I wish Akeem all the best and his family in their pursuance of justice where false imprisonment was concerned. And while I'm at it, I'll just suggest that all Jamaican and Caribbean people just be vigilant in your travels. And if and when you're doing your bookings for your ticket, if you can avoid areas that could put you in that gray area of suspicion, just avoid it. So that's pretty much my video today, people. Well, before I go, I have to big up some people. The first person I want to big up is a channel called Miss Wear 0104. I also want to big up Little Missy Missy. Then I want to big up one of my favorite subscribers, Ivalyn D, who have supported me on this channel and the channel with me and my wife. I also want to big up another favorite subscriber that goes by the name of Maxine So Blessed. Max so let's big up yourself because you've been with me for a minute on this channel and you have also supported the other channel I share with my wife. Yeah, and that's it for now, people. As you know, on this channel, I welcome all comments. I welcome thumbs up, thumbs down, agreement and disagreement because at the end of the day, each one teach one. Until next time, people. Peace.